Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. Holy Spirit, I thank you this morning for life. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for the opportunity once again to love your people and to handle your word. I pray today that you would speak life and release life in every individual here and those that are watching through a media outlet today. And we bless you and honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul writes in Philippians 4, 9, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. Turn to somebody and say, do them. And then the God of peace will be with you. The message version says, put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and you realized. Now, one of the things that I've, I've learned is we finished up a year and we're moving into the new year, January, the middle of January already. Is anything that you'd like to go back and change from last year if you could? If you could just have anybody wave at me, just about everybody. Newsflash, we can't. But you already knew that, didn't you? But I tell you what we can do, we can do something different this year. We can change some things this year. We can learn from last year. And as Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, the things that I've taught you, the things you've learned from me, do put into practice in your life. Now, the three statements that I want to share with you this morning, those statements are this, accent the good, punctuate the excellent, and dismiss the bad. Say that with me, accent the good, punctuate the excellent, and dismiss the bad. Now, I believe if you follow, do, and apply those, those simple s- statements in your life, you'll experience what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life. And that more abundantly, one translation says. Now, if Jesus has already paid for that, it's available for us, I think we ought to experience it. How about you? But we have to position ourselves for the blessing of God in our lives. They don't just, they don't chase us around. We chase God around. We pursue the Lord, seek first the kingdom of God. We pursue him and the blessings flow. You know, what I'm talking about today is having a right attitude in life. My wife Rose told me that no one is born with a bad attitude. We have to learn it and maintain it. But we also can learn and maintain a good attitude in life. Let's look at this first one, accent the good. Philippians, once again, 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. Are you seeing a theme here? If there's any virtue, is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The Amplified Version says, fix your mind on these things. Again, it's not a suggestion, it's a command. Fix your mind on these things. So what are we trained to fix our minds on? I would maintain that we are trained in our society to fix our minds on the negative of just about everything. I recently read a survey that said approximately 90% of all media news is negative. That sensationalist stories form 95% of media headlines. Reports say that negative news catches 30% more attention than positive news. 26.7% of people exposed to negative news go on to develop anxiety issues. I would say that percentage is low. 63% of children aged 12 to 18 say that watching the news makes them feel bad. 87% of the COVID-19 coverage in 2020 was negative. Surprise, surprise. Recently, a Russian news website entitled The City Reporter decided to publish only positive stories for a day. It was an experiment. The result of the experiment led to the website losing two-thirds of its readership. In a 24-hour news cycle, they published only positive news, lost two-thirds of their readership. This negative approach to life can and does affect all areas of our life. Now, Facebook and Twitter reveal the epidemic of what I call armchair critics and the negative opinions of people with little or no basis of fact supporting anything they're saying. (laughs) So why read it? See, we have a choice to accent something every day. And here's something, if you don't get anything else today, I want you to grab this. You will gravitate towards your most dominant thought. You will not. Now, remember, Paul wrote to Philippians, think on these things. Why? Because he knew, God knew, the Holy Spirit knew that we will gravitate, we will move towards our most dominant thought. You drive by the car lot, and you see something there that's been advertised a thousand times on TV, and you see that vehicle, and you drive by, and you have that twinge on the inside. I'd like to have that. 
Next time you drive by, you start thinking about it. You think about it, and then you Google it, and you, and you look at it on the Internet, and you, and, you, and you start picking, seeing the colors, and you go on where it says build one, and you, and you do that. And, and then before long, you drive by there, and you get out, and you look, walk around, and the, and, and, and the salesman starts coming out, and you run and jump in your car and drive off. But then the next time you go by and you get in it and you drive it around a little bit, and before you know, you've bought a vehicle you don't need, you can't afford, but you gravitate towards your most dominant thought. You will gravitate. So what is your most dominant thought? Anybody ever go grocery shopping? Huh? Nobody goes grocery shopping up here, huh? I went grocery shopping this week, yesterday. I went to cars. I got some keen idea up we don't, get, we don't have that down, down where I'm from. So I went and got some Kenai dip. Mmm, cheese and jalapenos. But that's all I got. But you know what? There were thousands of items in that store. And they had shopping carts there. And I couldn't have got one of everything in that store in one shopping cart. There's just too much stuff. So you have to be selective of what I put in my shopping cart. Guess what? There's thousands of news items, thousands of thoughts, thousands of ideas every day that we come across, but you don't have room in your shopping cart called your mind for all of them. You decide what you want to put in your mind. Nobody else can decide that for you. You and I decide what we're going to put, what we're going to think on, what we're going to accent. Because here's the reality. If it's in your mind, it's only a matter of time until it'll be in your heart, and then it'll be an action in your life. That's how it starts. Bad things don't just happen because we just up and decide to do it one day. It starts right here in our mind, and then it gets done in our heart, and then it's only a matter of time to when it's an action in our life. Stress seems to be a fact of life for most people today, but stress is nothing new on planet Earth. All you got to do is read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. There's some stress going on. I mean, there's stuff happening all the way. We, we read this, we sang the song earlier about, you know, I've been walking around these walls. I thought they'd fall by now. Anybody ever felt that way? See, stress is a part of life, but we go back to Philippians 4.8 is the answer to that. Whatever things is true, whatever things are lovely, think on these things. Now, you may be saying, Pastor, uh, you're just talking about positive thinking. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's a lot better than negative thinking. But I'm not talking about positive thinking just in a natural psychological vantage point. I'm talking about positive thinking with regards to the Word of God in our life and applying it because faith comes by the Word of God. So when you think on that Word, faith is released in your life. We're going to get to that about dealing with the negative in just a minute. There's a children's story that I, I kind of like. It makes a point here called Chicken Little. Anybody ever read the Chicken Little story, huh? Some of you younger generation need to Google that and see what that's about. It's a great, great story. Chicken Little sitting on a tree one day, an acorn falls and hits Chicken Little over the head. Chicken Little has a, an epiphany. The sky is falling. So Chicken Little jumps up and starts running and clucking and yelling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And then, and then she meets her friends, Lucky Ducky, Henny Penny, Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey. And so they all get together, and they said, we've got to go tell the king. The king has got to know that the sky is falling. So here they go running down the road, all these foul-feathered friends. And they're all yelling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And then they run into another character, Foxy Loxy. And they begin to tell Foxy Loxy about their great revelation that the sky is falling, and they're on the way to the king's palace to tell the king all about it. Foxy Loxy says, you know what? I know a shortcut to the king's palace. The shortcut was through his cooking pot. And they came into, into play with a real crisis in their lives. Newsflash, acorns fall off of oak trees. It may hurt your head if it hits you right, but it's not a crisis. And it's not something for us to lose our minds over. See, we can recognize the bad without giving recognition to the bad. Let me explain that to you. First of all, I've met people like Chicken Little that run, run around under trees hoping something would fall on them so they could create a crisis. Maybe you work with that person. Maybe you've got one like that in your family. I don't, don't be pointing at anybody here this morning. But there's some people, they just live their lives from crisis to crisis. That's not how God wants you to live. Accent the good. Oh, there's a lot of bad. I just said you can recognize the bad without giving recognition to the bad. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Let me explain. 
If you go to work tomorrow and you walk in unexpectedly and they say, I'm sorry, uh, something's happened. We no longer need your services. Uh, the company's shutting down. We're letting you go. You no longer have a job. Uh, turn around and go home. We're done. Now, I don't want that to happen to anybody, but if that happens tomorrow and you walk in, here's how you, here's how you can respond. You can either Give recognition to the bad, or you can simply recognize the bad. Giving recognition to the bad would be for you to scream and yell and fuss and cuss and pull on your hair and yell at the people there, and how dare you fire me? I've been here longer. I've been the best employee. You, you, how dare? And you could run out screaming, yelling, God, why did you let this happen to me, God? Why did you, God, you know I have these bills. I've got my snowmobile payments. I've got my boat payments. I've got my fishing pole payments. I've got, the, God, I've got all these things. I've got my super cub. I just Bob, God, I got, I've got it. I can't pay for all these guys. You know this is happening. Why didn't you let me down, God? Now, that's giving recognition to the bad. Or you can walk out of there and say, Father, you knew before I was born that today would happen because you're my good shepherd. You, you knew I was going to lose my job today. For some reason, you didn't give me a heads up on it. That's okay. It's all right. Because I know that you've got things planned. Because your word says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I thank you, Father, that this job is not my supply. You are my supply. You just use this job to supply in this time in my life. But you're still my supply. You supply all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm a tither, and you will rebuke the devourer for my sake. I thank you, Father, for that. Now, I don't know what you would do up here, but down south, we'd go get a big, tall glass of sweet tea, sit on the front porch, and relax for the day. And thank God for the new job that's coming and what he has planned for you. Do you see the difference? So you can recognize, yeah, I lost my job. That's bad. But you don't give recognition to it. You don't give it power over you. You can recognize the bad without giving recognition to it. Vince Lombardi, the great football coach, once said, it's not whether you get knocked down or not, it's whether you get back up to counts. So you'll never learn to adapt until you begin to act. Everybody shout, accent the good. Here's the second one, punctuate the excellent. That means to draw special attention to something, some water, some accomplishment, instead of drawing attention to all the failures. Listen, if all you ever do is criticize your kids for the wrong things they do, you're going to develop a complex in their lives. Celebrate the good. They're kids. They're going to make mistakes, just like you and I did. They're going to be goofy and funny and weird and all that kind of stuff the kids do. If all you ever look at in your, in your wife, your husband, your spouse is, is the negative, you're going to create a negative atmosphere there as well. Punctuate the excellent. David, David wrote this in Psalm 1846. The Lord lives, blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Look for the good in people. Sometimes you have to look for a while, but look for the good in people. You know, saying thank you is never going to be out of style. We live in an in a entitlement generation today. Uh, everybody owes me everything. No, nobody owes you anything. Saying thankful will never be out of style. Don't ever look the oh, obvious. Is anybody saved here today? Anybody know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? I'm telling you, if everything else is going downhill, you can get up every morning and say, I thank you that I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've got a home in heaven prepared for me someday where there's no taxes and nothing like that. I'm going to heaven someday. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. God loves me. He'll never need me and never forsake me. Amen. Punctuate the excellent. Look for ways to do that in your family. There's, all ne there's always negative stuff to point out to, but don't let society train us in that. Look, look at the excellent in things. Punctuate the excellent in things and pray for the other. Now, I want to get to the third one because it's so very important, and this is where really the Holy Spirit's going to drive some things out. And the third one is dismiss the bad. Say it with me. Dismiss the bad. Now, the two main areas of bad to dismiss there's past bad, and there's present bad. Philippians 3, once again, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm not finished yet. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are what? Behind. And reaching forward to the things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what do we need to dismiss from the past? Now, you've got to understand Paul was writing this, and Paul had a lot of past to dismiss. I mean, he was, he was public enemy number one for the church in the early part of his life. He, he, had, he had people killed. He had 
children um, um, left without their parents, uh, orphaned. Uh, he had people put in prison. Uh, and, and now, and many places where he went, I mean, he had great, great, great controversy and problems and issues. He, he had a lot. He said, I forget those things which are behind. Listen, you can never deal with the present bad until you first deal with the past bad. What, what event in your life do you, you need to do? Is there something in your life? Is there a hurt from somebody? Is there a memory of a pain or a mistake or an unpleasant event in your life? I think we've all got those things, and, and I don't want you to dwell on that a lot right now, but there's probably an event or two or three or four or five or six in our lives, if we'll be realistic about it, that we wish we could just erase from our memory. When I was in school, I played basketball, and I was, I was the point guard for our basketball team. And I was a real, just a country kid, so I ran everywhere in the fields and school, and and I was fast, I was. And I'm not super slow now, but I was fast uh, as a little kid there and teenager in, in school. And I was a point guard. Many times I could guard two guys at the same time. And we, we had a lousy team up until that year. And that year, it all came together. New coach, couple of kids, and uh, we, we, had a, we had a good team. So we were playing our arch rivals that we hadn't beaten in 10 years. The school hadn't beaten them in 10 years, and they had a good team. And it was on our court, and it was hotly contested. And, and in, the, in the middle of the game, the ball got knocked loose. Well, I took off after the ball, and their point guard took off after the ball. And I beat him by just a couple of steps. And I grabbed that ball, and I saw nothing but open court, not a player between me and the goal. Man, I took off like streak of lightning. I dribbled that fall. I was running. And all the rest of them, the other nine players, the five on my team, the or four on my team, the other five, they took off running, chasing me down through there. But as, as, as I began to head that direction, the gym erupted. Both sides erupted. My dad, who's not emotional at all, was sitting in the stands, and I saw him jump up and down and wave at me. My coach was running down the sideline, <laughs> screaming at me, yelling at me. I thought, this is going to be on ESPN tonight. <laughs> of course, that's before there was an ESPN. And, and the cheerleaders, I mean, people, the whole gym, both sides are just screaming and yelling. It was, it was incredible <laughs> until I went up for that perfect layup, and the ball left my hand, and it hit me. I'm at the wrong goal. I'm at the opponent's goal. That's what my coach was yelling. That's what my dad was yelling. That's what the whole gym was yelling. Except the other side, they were saying, go for it. I had so much momentum, though, that the ball hit the backboard and the front of the rim a couple of times and bounced off. Guess who got the rebound? Me. I'm telling you, if Shaquille O'Neal had been there. I would have blocked him out and got the rebound on that. <laughs> I got the rebound and then took off just like a streak of lightning to the other end. It looked like the Keystone Cops. Some of you have to Google that know what that is. I mean, they were like, whoa, 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 where's he going? And, and so here the other nine, you know, they're turning and chasing me back to the other end. I wanted to dribble out the end of the gym, through the doors, down the gravel road home. I wanted to join the French Foreign Legion and never be seen again. Fortunately, we won the game by two points. Now, if I'd have made that basket, it would have counted for them. Oh, it was embarrassing, but I've got a lot of mileage out of that story. <laughs> but, you know, there's some stories I could tell you about me that aren't funny and didn't have a good ending and didn't win by two points. And you've got some stories like that, too. And you know what I'm talking about. You know what it's like to, to have an event or something happen in your life. You wish you could go back and change, but you can't. You made a wrong decision. Somebody hurt you, whatever. How do you deal with it? Let's do it right now. First of all, you got to reverse it. How do, I, how do I dismiss the past bad? Reverse it. How do you do that? Forgive yourself. Number one, forgive yourself. Is anybody here like me that I'm the hardest person to forgive? It's harder for me to forgive me than it is anybody 
else. Anybody else sound like that? Yeah, just, you, maybe you need to go home today and just look in the mirror and say, I forgive you. Or maybe you just need to say it right now in your life. I forgive you. But I did it. Yeah, I did too. But you still forgive yourself. You know, the Bible says if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. I think I could be considered other. other. So not only do I have to forgive you, I have to forgive me too. So the first thing we do is we forgive ourselves. Forgive others who may have hurt you. You know, forgiveness is not for other people. It's for you. Most, most people that you haven't, if, if there's somebody that's hurt you, you haven't forgiven them, you know, they, they don't care. They've forgotten it. They don't care that you don't forgive them. It's a chain around your neck, not around theirs. See, forgiveness releases you from that. So forgive others. And then ask others to forgive you where it's applicable. And here's the second thing. Don't rehearse it. Don't get on Facebook and well, it's the anniversary of when I was wounded. Or you call somebody on the phone and you share it with them as a prayer request. You know, I just, you know, I was hurt 29 and a half years ago. And, and I just have a tinge of it coming back today. Could you pray for me? Huh? Could you please just pray for me? Do you need the details? Let me go over it again with you. Let me, let me just share it with you out of my heart. Stop it. Don't rehearse it. Let it go. Don't pick up the offense. There may still be some poison in it. Because here's a, here's a principle. What you refuse to dismiss will continue to destroy. I'm a pastor of a church, have been for about four decades now in ministry, and I had no idea what I was getting into when God called me into ministry. I was so naive, and I had a, I had a crash course real quick in pastoring. But I've been hurt, 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 hurt by people. Because it's really not me. It's because they're mad at God or they're aggravated with God about something. And since they can't get to him, I'm the closest thing. In respect to, you know, they can be ugly with. But you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to walk in absolute immediate forgiveness. Uh, my friend John Bevere wrote the book, The Bait of Satan. The Bait of Satan is offenses. Satan's always wanting to get us offended at somebody, offended at each other, offended at a pastor, offended whatever. I don't allow, I have no offense. I don't allow offenses in my life. Now, people could aff attempt to offend me, but I'm not going to receive it. I'm not going to receive it. That's a whole other message in itself, but that's how you dismiss and if you don't dismiss it, it will continue to destroy you. But then that gets to the present bad. Are you getting anything here today? Unless you dismiss the past, you'll have past bad. You'll have major difficulty in dismissing the present bad. Hebrews 12, 1 says this, Let us lay aside or cast off every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Now, in my early years, I read that as one statement, get rid of the sin. But there's two things here. It says, Cast aside, cast off every weight and the sin. From what I remember from English class, and is a conjunction that connects two thoughts. So weights may not be sins, but they still need to get rid of them. See, you may have some weights in your life. They're not sins in your life, but they're weights, and you need to get rid of them. So don't allow anything to hinder your race got to dismiss the present bad. One of the reasons that people miss it in this area, I believe, is, well, they have different attitude problems. But if you want to dismiss the present bad, you have to make a determination, that's what I'm going to do. So you have to, you can decide every day what you put into that shopping cart. You, you can decide every day what you allow to dominate your thinking. Well, I, I didn't mean to see that, but I saw it, now it's on my mind. Okay, well, then fill your mind up with something else and flush that out and move on. You see, it's a conscious effort. You say, well, that, that sounds like it takes some effort. Yes, it does. It does take some effort. It takes some mental effort. It takes some spiritual effort. It takes spiritual discipline. That's what I'm going to do. No, I think I'll just meditate on it. I, they hurt me, and I'm just going to talk. And why did they do that? And I know why they did that, and they did that for this reason. And, and before long, you've built an offense into a, a mega offense, and it really wasn't that big to deal with, to start with. You stop it. You dismiss the present bad. See, but there's a lot of bad going on in our world right now. Oh, don't I know it. I mean, we could spend all morning 
singing gloom, doom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, doom, despair, and agony on me. Or we could spend all morning singing, I walked around these walls and they fell. And God will never for, for, uh, leave me. And, and all the wonderful, exciting songs that we sang this morning about the glorious power of God in our life. And he's overdone it again. He'll do it again in my life. See, you can choose what you're going to sing. You, you see, focusing on the negative does not make it go away. It just makes it get bigger. I shouldn't tell you this, but growing up on the farm, we had a saying around the, around the barnyard, the more you stir it, the more it stinks. <laughs> what are you stirring in your life? What are you applying in your life? Where are you right now in your life with, with respect to accenting the good, punctuating the excellent, and dismissing the bad? Because, see, those, that's an attitude habit. And I'm just, I'm just sharing with you the Word of God from Philippians. It's just very simple. H how to do that? But some people don't. Why don't they? I think sometimes it's because they're lazy. They say, I can't help it. I just can't help it. I can't help it. That's the way my mama was and my daddy was. My grandma, that's just the way we are. It's, now, stop it. You, you're born again. You have a new daddy now. You have a new nature now. You're a child of the Most High God now. You can and will overcome in your life. So you can do it. Somebody say, I can do it. Sometimes it's a lack of accepting personal responsibility. Own it and move on from it. How about you today? You need to dismiss something in your life? Is there something bad in your life? Have you been axing? Is the Holy Spirit putting his finger on something in your life right now that, you know what, I've been axing every time I get on my face. Check your Facebook account. Every time, my Twitter. Look, look, look at, is everything on there? I've got people, I've got people even in my church that, that have got so consumed about all the negativity and everything that's going on in the government and all the lies and all the deception and all of the things that's, that's going on. That's all they're on their Facebook. That's all they're posting. So, and it's got them distracted from the call of God of what they're supposed to do. Yeah, there's a lot of evil going on in the world, but there's always been evil in the world. And there's going to be an Antichrist rise up. Hello, because God said so. But there's also going to be something called the trump of the Lord's sound. And when the sound of the trumpet comes, the dead in Christ will rise first and those that are remain here are going to go up in the air to meet him. It's called the rapture. He says, what are you going to do when the Antichrist comes? I'm going to watch from above because I'm going to be in heaven. But we need to change. Yeah, we need to change a lot of things, but that's above my pay grade right now. I'm just going to focus right now on accenting the good, punctuating the X, and dismissing the bad. I'm not going to ignore the bad. I'm not going to stick my head in a bucket somewhere, but I'm going to dismiss the bad. I'm going to dismiss it. I'm not going to let it occupy my life. How about you? If you got a story like my basketball story that you, you need to just let it go. Somebody ought to write a song with that. Let it go. Let it go. You need to just let it go. And I know sometimes it's not that easy. But with the Holy Spirit, it's possible right now. When I start talking about the past, sometimes feelings come up in your life. It's like, don't talk about that. I, I don't want to remember that. Well, why don't you dismiss that right now? Let's just ask the Holy Spirit right now just to dismiss that in our lives and deal with that. I'm not, I'm not going to dismiss my basketball story because I've got too much mileage out of it. It's, it's a good story. But I tell you what, there's some other stories in my life that I'm not going to tell you about that's full of pain and full of hurt and full of regret. That is any way I could change it, I would. I can't change it, but I can dismiss it because it's under the blood. And the same is true in your life. Is there something right now that you need to, you just need to release it. You just need to release it right now. Holy Spirit, open our hearts.
right now. Open hearts of people right now. Only what's necessary. Only what's necessary, Holy Spirit. If the Lord's speaking to you right now, if there's something in your life you need to just get over, move on, release it. It may still be in your memory, but the claws of the pain will be removed. Let's begin to say to yourself right now, I forgive me. Come on, just whisper that to yourself. Put your hand over your heart if you want to. And just say, I forgive me. I forgive me. Maybe you need to forgive somebody else. If you do, just speak that. But pastor, I, uh, I don't feel like forgiving them. We don't go by feeling, we go by faith. Feeling doesn't follow faith. Or faith doesn't follow feeling, rather. Feeling follows faith. You forgive people the same way you do everything else in the kingdom, by faith. By faith. I was hurt badly one time, and it just occupied my mind all day and night going to bed. So every morning I would, when I got up, I would just pray, Father, I forgive, and I call their name. I forgive them. I'd speak their name out loud. I forgive so-and-so. I release them into your hands. Every day I prayed. I prayed for weeks every morning. Father, I forgive. I said the same person until one day I, I didn't. I forgot to. Two or three days later, I remembered that I'd forgotten to. You know why I forgot to? Because it was done. It was done. It was done. It was out of my system, cleansed by the blood. Just speak it, Father, I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. I forgive them. And if there's somebody or something, you just need to ask them to forgive you. Then do it. I don't mean get up and go to somebody here in the building right now, but if you need to later, do it. See, Pastor, could you get back to the accent, the good part? Yeah, we will in a second. There's no freedom like the freedom that comes from the presence of the Lord when we get the junk and the gunk cleansed out of our minds and our hearts. Are you getting anything here today? Is this a word for anybody here this morning? Holy Spirit, I pray right now. For the cleansing power that comes through forgiveness to flow in every person's life this very moment right now. Father, I knew that I know there are a few acute issues right now in some people's lives. They're very severe in this area. But you handle them just like you handle the small ones. It's done in Jesus' name. Let healing flow, deliverance flow, strength flow, forgiveness flow in the name of Jesus right now, right now, right now, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for listening to this message today. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you realize that you need Jesus as your Savior, and you'd like to pray with me to either commit your life to Jesus for the first time or rededicate your life to the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and bringing me forgiveness. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of them today, and I ask you to cleanse me and wash me of all my sin. I commit to live for you all the rest of the days of my life, and I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 
If you prayed that prayer today, would you text the word SAVED to 907-357-2065? We'd like to send you some information and some materials that will help you in your Christian walk. God bless.